Hey guys, I just want to remind us all, including myself, that fear is not our master, but Jesus is. I do not know what might take place tomorrow or any day, but we certainly serve a God that does. Just today I saw a breaking news report from Haaretz.com that Russia carried out multiple operations against U.S.-led coalition in Syria. According to Haaretz, a Wall Street Journal report has said that military officials are worried that these Russian actions might escalate into an unplanned conflict between the U.S. and Russian forces in Syria. Guys, I'll leave a link to this article in our uh, description box. Uh, but try to stay with me, guys, to the end of the video. I'll have a prayer and a prophetic word I received from the Lord today. Guys, although the days are growing darker and darker through these last seconds of these perilous times, we will not be afraid. I try my best to remind myself of what Scripture says. In Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7, it says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Guys, today I've just been kind of thinking about when John, uh, when the Apostle John was imprisoned on the island of Patmos. He was given a vision of the end times. Of course, we all know that's recorded in the book of Revelation. And guys, we all know that we are living in those days now. We're living in the day of the very last days of this final age. The events leading up to the rapture are happening rapidly. If you're waiting for revival, don't hold your breath. The letter Jesus dictated to the Ephesus congregation indicated a listless church that would rather have worldly gain than revival. Guys, there's a few of us who don't have our hearts filled with the pull of this world, but we all need to allow the Holy Spirit to fire us up. Time is so very short. Short. Jesus told us signs to watch for leading to the end. He spoke of wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilence, famine, you might ask which of those signs aren't happening today. Well, you guessed it. They're all happening all at once. Everything is in place, including alliances in the Middle East. There is the coming of the promised rapture, and it's about to happen. In Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Guys, the Greek words for all this makes it clear that after the church age, John was called to the throne room of God. John's kind of representing Christians who will be raptured prior to the time of Jacob's trouble, also known as the tribulation. In Revelation chapters 4 and 5, it describes wondrous events in heaven following the rapture. Chapter 6 and following chapters tell of the horrors happening on earth as the Antichrist takes control and God's wrath is poured out 
upon the whole unbelieving world. There will be people who will come to faith during that time of judgment, but their life will be totally miserable, and most will be beheaded because of their faith. They will be known as tribulation saints who refuse to follow the Antichrist and also refuse to take his mark. If anyone out there listening is waiting to accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for salvation, I strongly advise do it now. Tomorrow could possibly be too late. We are living in the perilous time scripture has talked about. We are living in the days before Daniel's 70th week begins. And it's only going to get worse with each passing day. We as believers have the Holy Spirit sealed within us. So let's allow the Holy Spirit to ignite within us an even more brighter fire of faith to shine as gospel beacons to a lost and dying world. In Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul was describing the armor of God. And, and then Paul also asked for prayer. Prayer is a key to advance through the battlefields of life to accomplish all God has given us to do. But the Apostle Paul was one of the most outspoken missionaries who ever lived. But his request wasn't for selfish comforts. He asked prayer for boldness. And we can pray the same thing. In Ephesians six nineteen twenty, it says, And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Guys, that should be the prayer of every Christian. The times may be difficult. No, the times are difficult and filled with very fearful events. But the power of the Holy Spirit will help us to speak boldly and to do God's will in spite of the attacks of the powers of darkness all around. Guys, be bold. But be sure you are being bold in God's word, which is God's truth. It seems fear has silenced many believers. We need to arm ourselves with the knowledge of scripture and step away from the wishy-washy faith like those talked about in the church of Laodicea. Boldly share the gospel with the lost souls in this world. They may even be the ones that live next door to you. Guys, I just want to share some things I feel the Lord has put on my heart. It concerns all those that have lost their jobs or have even given up their jobs for what they truly believe. The Lord reminded me about all of Israel when they began their exodus from Egypt bondage. They had left Egypt for a barren wilderness while heading to their promised land. Of course, we all know the story. It turned out they had to stay in the wilderness for 40 years. Guys, you got to understand, it wasn't like you've seen in Moses' movies. In a movie, it looked like maybe there was around 3,000 people following behind Moses. But in re reality, it was more like 2 or 3 million people following behind Moses. And that's not even including their thousands of livestock and herds. Guys, this vast number was getting ready to live in a barren wilderness. But God. Guys, sometimes we all need a but God moment. But our God had it all planned out for them. Just like he's got it all planned out for you and me. He supplied their every need and their clothes didn't even wear out. In Nehemiah 9.21 it says, For forty years you sustained them in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. 
their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. Guys, a day came when Moses struck a rock and water gushed out. It wasn't just a one-time thing. This water kept flowing, causing a river through the wilderness. I just want to remind us of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. It says, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. All of them ate the same spiritual food, and all of them drank the same spiritual water, for they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and that rock was Christ. Wow, guys, Christ, the rock, is still traveling with us today. Of course, we read later on that Moses was supposed to speak to a rock for more water to gush out. But although Moses disobeyed and struck the rock, the water began to gush anyway. Amen. Guys, during their wilderness journey, they had to be able to grow things that they and their herds and livestock ate, not to mention the things they also needed in their sacrifices to the Lord. And of course, they also had manna. But all this was done in a barren wilderness. I have to say, wow. In fact, I have to say, wow, God. Can you imagine the size of a camp that had uh, what the size of a camp looked like with about three million people, I have to say, wow, well, again. Guys, just look at a modern-day city that has that many people. I'm actually doing this whole scenario injustice uh, uh, for me to speak and describe all of Israel's journey would certainly take much longer than what I'm saying, but God was with them every step of the way. You just look at the land mass that that many people would take up in a modern day city. I'm trying to do a quick uh, reference with the people of Israel as they wandered the wilderness, but like I said, I was doing it injustice. It'd take a whole lot longer and a whole lot more scripture to, to truly explain the vastness of it all. God took care of them, guys. We as believers are on our Exodus journey currently today. We have been in the wilderness of life and we are continuing, continuing to move towards our promised land. I happen to believe that we are nearing the end of our journey. Jesus is at the door and all prophetic signs have pointed directly to the rapture. I don't know how God will care for all believers during these darkened days. But where my wife and I are concerned in these last days of perilous times, I'm going to try my best to believe that my God will take care of us in every circumstance and through every circumstance. Guys, the age of amazing grace is almost over. The river Jordan is in sight, and we have our eyes fixed on the promised land that's just over the other side. Our Jesus is coming, and it very well could be today. Although I do not know, I, what I do know is I have fixed my eyes, and I have fixed them by keeping them fixed on Jesus. Amen and amen. Guys, I have a prayer that I want to pray over all of us, and I also have a prophetic word that I would love to share with our family, all of you guys out there. Guys, God is able. He is more than able. He is with us every step of the way. Mighty God, we declare 
the Lord is protecting every one of us by keeping us under his wings every moment of the day. We declare God's face is shining upon us like the noonday sun, and it's dispelling all the darkness that would encroach upon our lives. We declare God's countenance is lifted up over each of us like a canopy of peace that nothing or no one can disturb. We receive it and we accept it as a gift to heaven over our lives. We declare showers of God's grace are raining down providential care like manna from heaven and water from the rock for each and every one of us. We declare the great I am that I am is upholding us and taking us toward the finish line, even if that means picking us up and carrying us across. Satan is not the ruling prince of our lives, but you, O God, are. We will remember that Satan is defeated, and we will rejoice in the Lord with exceeding great joy. Abba, you are perfect in all your ways. You have measured our borders. You have weighed the mountains that stand before us, and you have said that we are able to take the land for your glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mighty God, we declare these things done in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Lord, we give you thanks, praise, and honor for all you do and for everything you are getting ready to do. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying to me, Though your strength and resolve has been tried, just know this. I have angels holding your arms up, even in this hour. Just as Moses required help holding his arms up to ensure the victory, you too are receiving divine help. Keep pressing in because quitting has never been your portion through any hour of despair. You have been being stretched and made strong through it all, but know this, what has been developing on the inside of you will soon prove to you that it will have been worth it all. Do not allow frustration or restlessness to take advantage over your determination to make it to the finish line. Soon you will see the end and you will reap the rewards for all the labor you have done as unto me. Your rewards are waiting and they are just around the bend. Do not look back, but keep your eyes looking forward. The end of this age is drawing nigh and so is your redemption. Fear not, because I am even at the door, says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Praise the Lamb of God. Guys, I just want to close with a few more verses of scriptures found in Matthew chapter 19 in verses 27 and 29. In verse 27, it says, Then Peter said to him, We've given up everything to follow you. What will we get? And in verse 29, it says, And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. Oh, glory to God. Oh, man, I just felt God all over me, guys. Guys, fear is not our master. Jesus is. We will keep our eyes focused on the soon return of our Lord. I tell you, guys, it's just right at the door. I can't hardly wait. I can't hardly wait. We will fear no 
evil. God's got this, guys. Guys, my wife and I, we will be seeing you in the clouds at any time. We continue to pray, and we will keep praying until the Lord catches us up and takes us out of this place. We love you guys. God bless you and Maranatha. Father, heal each one within the sound of our voice, God. Give them hope. Give them hope. Give them health. Give them healing. Give them your everything, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, In Jesus', Jesus name. I love you. The Most High God knows every star by name. Amen. The billions upon billions upon billions of stars, He knows each one by name. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows what hurts you and has hurt you. He knows the sickness you're enduring. God is breaking in with breakthrough. The anointing of God is piercing through ooh, the darkness that has surrounded you. Reach out, receive it, claim it. God will make a way where there seems no way. Amen. God is going to make a way for you to come up and out of the pain that's been holding you down. I thank you that you touch everyone's body, everyone's mind, everyone's everything that's watching this, this broadcast, Lord God. Touch them. Yes, heal them. Lord. Save them to the uttermost, Lord. Show yourself strong. Yes in their lives. Yes. Show that God yes, is God, God and He is well able. He is yes. more than able. Susie, just say a quick salvation prayer right now. Okay, right repeat now. this prayer with us if you need Jesus. Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus thank you. to pay the penalty of my sins by dying on the cross in my place. Thank you, Lord, that he died on the cross, but then the third day he rose again so that I can live a life of victory. Lord, I ask you to be Lord of my life and come into my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So if you pray that prayer in faith, believing you're now a child of God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. Your, <laughs> your past is past. Amen. Your sins are under the blood. They're behind you. And, and now the, walk forward in, in God. And the Most High wanted me to tell you, do not look behind you because you're not going that way. You keep moving forward. Keep your eyes on the prize which is before you. Amen. Thank you, Lord.